Back in December, I asked you guys to recommend me 50 manga to read. The rules were simple, one recommendation per person, it couldn't be a series I've already read, and I would read the first 10 chapters, overall giving me a total of 500 chapters to read. So, in my head, I thought, okay, 500 chapters, not too bad. That's like only half of One Piece. This should be easy. Yeah, that was a dumb statement. Some were good, but some were bad. Some were even a step above good, but some made me... However, that wasn't even the cherry on top. What I forgot to consider is that I'm an absolute fucking moron. You see, whenever I get invested in a series, I have a very hard time abruptly stopping. Yeah, I'm an idiot. Don't get me wrong, a lot of the ones I read all the way through were bad, but like, come on. I can't just not know who Miss Mystic actually is. I got recommended a variety of works, from romance to psychological to message to Kanye West's West. favorite idol, to sports, to hentai, to one shots, to Super Cock Showdown, which I'll tell you right now, is not about chicken fighting. Here's a list of what I'll be reading, if you want to see more details, like if I completed this series or plan to, it's linked down in the description with extra stats. The video is timestamped, feel free to jump around. Get comfy and grab your favorite snack, it's going to be a long one. Our first recommendation comes from No One Cares, who recommended Kanajo Ga Senpai ni NTR Reita no De, or in English, my girlfriend cheated on me with a senior, so I am cheating on her with his girlfriend. Which is quite the interesting title, but what's even more interesting is that the manga is actually pretty decent. Huh? Now, a lot of you may be staring at the infamous three letters, and already are formulating a bunch of mean words that I see way too often on a certain site. However, this manga is the antithesis of NTR. Yes, the main character is getting cheated on, but the title is a half lie. He doesn't actually cheat back, instead working with the girlfriend of the person who he got cheated on to better himself in multiple aspects, looks, actions, demeanor. Both of them slowly make their partners become more guilty and attached before they humiliate them in front of everyone by exposing them. And that moment is satisfying. Although, I will say, I did have to read like 50 chapters of the light novel to get to that point, since the manga is not caught up. After the reveal, you could say that the story's quality takes a turn for the worse. Let's just say that they introduce the main character's little sister, and she may or may not have a crush on the main character. This next one comes from Maria, and they recommended Rangoku no Ash, which is a one-shot by the same person who makes Spy X Family. Sadly, with one-shots, unless you can levitate, they rarely have enough time to do anything meaningful. You can really see the character design inspiration for Yor and Anya. Really cool concept, I wanted to see more, but I definitely would not trade it for Spy X Family. This next one comes from Wrath, and they recommended Killer in Love. This title has actually been on my plan to read for a bit, mostly because of this panel I saw online. What has me worried though, is the title. With the name Killer in Love, I can't really imagine this series ending well, but hopefully it's not too bad. I didn't think it was possible to have worse written characters than Rent a Girlfriend, but I stand corrected. Just like, don't read this. Even though the art is good, it's really not worth it. This next one is from May, and they recommended JK Haru is a sex worker in another world, which is somehow like only the third most ridiculous isekai title I've heard of, right behind Reborn as a vending machine and the hero took everything from me so I partied with the hero's mother. However, despite its ridiculous title, this manga has a lot of substance behind it. I went in expecting an erotica or a manga with dumb tropes, and yeah, the manga does have both of these things, but more importantly, it highlights a lot of the misogyny that exists around the sex worker industry, and because of this, at times it is very, very uncomfortable to read, but I think because it's not afraid to show these types of scenes, it's what makes it good.
What is that? Teru. No, look, Peon, the sky. Eh? What are you talking about? Surrounded by total darkness, with only a scarce amount of food and water, how do these three escape from this caved-in tunnel, especially before one of them loses their sanity? This is only the surface of Dragonhead. They manage to find a way out of the tunnel quickly, only to meet this scenery. This is the end of the world. Usually in stories about apocalypses, there is a beacon of hope or some message about finding the light in the darkness. This manga says fuck that. The more they try to understand what is happening, the worse they realize their situation is, and it keeps getting worse and worse and worse until the very end. Dragonhead is an interesting read, one that had me captivated from start to finish. However, it's also the biggest blue ball I've ever read. Be warned, if you decide to read this and become even a tiny bit invested in the world, the ending is probably going to piss you off. This next one comes from Vu, and they recommended Wand Dance. If you couldn't guess from the title, this manga is about dancing. I know nothing about dancing, but you don't actually need to know anything about it to enjoy this manga. This is the main character. He's tall and handsome, but despite his looks, he isn't very confident. He suffers from a stutter and is extremely shy. He constantly feels pressured to fit in with others, continuing to act and do things that he doesn't agree with. But one day, after a chance encounter with a girl, he gets the courage to try to change. Character development is the best part of One Dance. Seeing the main character slowly become more confident in himself is exactly what keeps you reading. It also helps that the author is passionate about their work. Usually, there will be a character designed for maybe three or four characters, but this author was like, nah, and did 40 on a single page. And all of them got that Goku drip. It's also just not a one-time thing. You can see these characters in the background at any given time. And for those not sold yet, did I mention this is also a romance? Number one rule, don't stick your dick in crazy. This guy did not follow that rule, and bad things happen because of it. Miss Mystic is practically hentai, with a layer of extra plot added onto it. I don't think it's worth reading at all, although that statement is coming from someone who read all 97 chapters, so there isn't a lot of backbone to it. But let me tell you something, there's only one reason to read Miss Mystic, and it's for its in-depth psychological breakdown of what it means to be... Some... Let's just go with plot. It's for its plot. So at that point, why not just read the best there is offered instead? Instead of Miss Mystic, read Landlady Nuna, don't question it, just trust me. Or use your eyes because I'm probably showing some very nice pictures on the screen right now. This next one comes from Josh and they recommended Citrus. Basically, this is a school romance with a couple twists. First off, it's a Yuri manga, which is pretty basic, but here is where it gets a little weird. The female lead is a Gairu, and is a transfer student at an all-girls high school. After a run-in with the student council president about violating the dress code, she finds out that that very same president is becoming her stepsister. Not only do they now have to live together, but they have to share the same room and bed. You can see where this is going. Add in a couple side characters to spice up the drama between the two, and there you have it. The setup is dumb, the conflicts in the plot are dumb, and the characters are dumb. That being said, um, how do, how do I phrase this? I'll probably be reading some more Yuri manga in the future. This next one comes from KLB Dude, and they recommended Shimanami Tasogare. The manga follows many individuals and encapsulates their struggles as they slowly find out and accept who they are. Worries about disappointing your family, how their perceptions of you will completely change with just a single sentence, the pressure and guilt at keeping what you are from them a secret. I personally think it's weird to formulate an opinion on how well a sensitive topic was handled when I don't have experience or can't directly relate, but from my impression and what I've read from the reviews online, this manga handles topics surrounding the LGBTQ community very well. Definitely check it out if you're interested. Gil Hermit, I just want to say, I don't like you, alright? 
and it's not because the recommendation you gave me was bad, quite the opposite, it was too good. I've been read all 84 chapters of this manga, and now have to wait every single week to read more. To me, Blue Box is the perfect romance manga. I like when romance is not the only main focus, but split between another goal. This manga follows three high schoolers as they work hard to achieve their goals in their respective sports, badminton, basketball, and gymnastics. Taiki, a freshman trying to improve at badminton, admires Chinatsu, the school's star basketball player. Seeing how hard she works to achieve her goals motivates Taiki to try harder. Turns out both their mothers are old high school friends, so when Chinatsu's parents have circumstances where they have to move abroad, Chinatsu begins living with Taiki. A cliche setup that probably has you rolling your eyes, and trust me, I did too. But somehow, this manga defied all laws and made it normal. There's no, oh no, I accidentally walked on you showering, Oni-chan. Or one of the characters losing all their brain cells because a girl is now living in their house. Obviously, Taiki is very nervous at first, but over time that nervousness goes away as they slowly become more comfortable with each other. It has amazing art, great written characters, all who have realistic positive growth mindsets, and a splash of drama. If you like romance or sports manga, read it. It excels in both aspects. Our next recommendation is Yotubato, which was recommended by Ethan. Let's be honest, most 5 year olds are really stupid. They are brass and have no filter, and are easily entertained. I mean, when I was 5, every so often, I would sneak into my dad's office, take paper out of the printer, go hide under a table with said paper, and then proceed to eat it. Why did I eat paper when I was 5? I have no idea. This manga showcases exactly that, the random incomprehensible things you did as a child. I'll admit it, out of all the childhood care manga I've read, Spy X Family, Kakushigoto, and My Girl, this one is shaping up to be my favorite. When reading about Yotsuba's activities, memories of similar things I did in my childhood flooded my mind, whether it be playing with water guns, pushing your friend into a pool, or for some reason, eating paper. It's very simple, recalling these memories makes me happy, and being happy is good. Our next recommendation is Usogui, which was recommended by Wolfie. I actually took this recommendation from my underrated seinen video because I kept getting comments to read it, some going as far to say it was snubbed. At the time, I searched it up, looked at the My Anime List page, read the synopsis, and went, ooh, gambling. Then I saw the number 541 next to its chapters and read this instead. Not my greatest decision. And if I had just chosen to commit to one chapter of Usogui, maybe I wouldn't have spent that night staring at a ceiling, questioning where I went wrong in life. Because it took one chapter, one chapter, to get hooked onto this series like a slot machine. And I had hit the jackpot, figuratively and literally. Usugui deserves its own video, and for that reason, I'm not going to go into more detail about it here. I don't know when that video will come out, but no, there will be one. What I do want to mention before we move on to our next recommendation is that the author of Usugui, Toshio Sako, is an absolute unit. You can literally write a manga based on his story. Brushing off his dreams of becoming a mangaka, simply labeling it as a daydream, Toshio became a hairdresser straight out of high school. However, at the age of 28, he realized that he was quite sad. So he quit his job, went to a mangaka by the name of Takashi Hinata, and begged him to let him work for him for free. He had no job and worked for no money, just so he could learn techniques faster. He threw everything away to chase after his dream, pouring every ounce he had in order to achieve it. The art of Usugui isn't the best at the start. It's not bad, but when you compare it to its later volumes, it's absolutely absolutely unreal how much he improved. But he didn't only draw to improve his art. Throughout the serialization of Usugui, he participated in amateur boxing at the same time. He would train by day and draw by night. He still uses this method to improve his art to this day. In his newest manga, Batuk, which is about capoeira, he picked up the martial art himself. There is so much more to his story and personality that I've left out, but if I keep rambling, this segment will take too much time. I'd like to formally apologize to all Usugui enjoyers out there, it was indeed snubbed. Our next recommendation is from Shrinkum, and they recommended 353056. Judging by this one's six digit title, I think I have a feeling I know what it's going to be about. Okay, so I went in expecting to see some degenerate things, and I did indeed see those degenerate things. But why were there also panels like this in it? This is the coolest, most detailed looking train I've seen, and it's from a fucking hentai. 
This next one is from Spooky Dino, who recommended Yokohama Shopping Trip. This is actually not the first time I've had this recommended to me, and from everything I've heard, this one is a very wholesome, feel-good slice of life. And for the most part, it is. It follows Alpha, a robot in the countryside of Japan, and her daily life interacting with the people around her as she tends to her owner's small cafe. So what about it isn't that wholesome feel-good slice of life? Well, not exactly. The reason why she's strapped with a blicky is actually really sweet. I'm talking about the method they chose for robots to use when transferring information. Maybe it was through email or a fax machine. Nope, they decided that kissing would be the method. Mouth to mouth. Am I the only one that thinks this is out of left field? Like, you have a relatively normal interaction between two robots, and then the other robot goes, Please stick out your tongue. And then they proceed to kiss. And then it resumes its normal slice of life. I'm not exactly complaining, and the manga is very good, but that one moment completely caught me off guard when it happened. Our next recommendation comes from Ida and is Lying Mikun and Broken Machan. This one was interesting. In less than 200 pages, this manga tries to break down what kidnapping and other horrendous things can psychologically do to a person. However, with how little pages there are, it leaves a little more to be desired. I did like how the manga had an unreliable narrator, which keeps you questioning what is true and what isn't. It's something you don't see often, but works really well in stories like these. This one had a lot of potential, but it tries to do too much in too little time. Every once in a while, you encounter a piece of media that changes your perspective on life. Some personal examples would be Oyasumi Poon Poon, The Climber, and Berserk. Now, Supercock Showdown is also one of those pieces of media for me, but for all the wrong reasons. Never in my life did I think that I would see two chicks with dicks docking. That's also just one of the many weird, just absolutely out there things that occur in the five chapters of this manga. Believe it or not, but this destruction is not caused by your normal cannon. And this might look like a normal reservoir, but it isn't. Is it too big? Well, I don't know. You tell me, because that is the size of a fucking yacht. I have one question to ask, Luffy Jaton. Why the fuck have you read this? Kasune is ugly, having a face that resembles a monster. Little known fact, kids don't like monsters. And because of that, Kasune is bullied badly. Her mother left her behind a memento, a crimson lipstick that, when upon kissing someone, causes you to swap faces. Fed up with everything and longing to proudly stand up on a stage, Kasune steals the face of their class's play lead, who happens to also be her main bully. She delivers a stellar performance, and afterwards, with the bully scared she won't be able to get her face back, one thing leads to another, and... There's no denying that this manga is extremely edgy. When I first began reading it, I labeled Kasune as a manga driven by its edginess alone, that it wouldn't amount to being more than an edgy wish fulfillment type of story. I couldn't have been more wrong. I honestly don't know how to describe this manga to give it the justice it deserves without simply telling you to go read it. Yes, in the first couple of volumes, you'll be questioning Kasune's over-the-top edginess, its plot, its purpose, and its characters. But once its roller coaster begins, it can't be stopped. Almost all the characters in Kasune are disgusting, filthy people riddled with sin. However, the way the manga slowly reveals the mystery behind Kasune's mother and the truth about everything surrounding her as it builds towards its climax is almost flawless. This is not a happy manga, not by a long shot, nor does it have a happy ending, but its resolution just makes sense. Definitely give it a chance. The next one is from AMV Central, and they recommended I'm a Koi, I'm Now in Love. I actually don't read a lot of shoujo romance. The reason why is in shoujo, the male main lead is usually some intelligent, attractive, talented Rizzler who's also extremely popular. The problem is, I tend to self-insert a lot. Big surprise, but the person recording these lines on a Friday night, alone in his room, doesn't really fit that criteria. I will say, I did enjoy how fast the relationship made progress, it's a breath of fresh air from the romance I normally read. The manga did have its moments as well, besides that Siscon character, which was a bit weird. If I wanted that trope, I would go read Citrus or Domestic Girlfriend again. I didn't like this one. 
I know it's pretentious and dumb, because looking at it objectively, the manga at its base is still the good old story that no longer human is. And it's Junji Ito. The man definitely draws really well. However, even though it didn't affect the narrative too much, every change Junji Ito made to the story felt wrong to me. I think my disappointment comes from the knowledge that the original No Longer Human was semi-autobiographical and the last thing Ozumu Desai wrote before he took his own life a couple months later. It's an extremely personal and tragic story that I believe should be experienced in its purest form possible. But that's just my opinion. Honestly, I recommend this story either way. However, whatever you choose, tread carefully. It is extremely dark. I can't recommend it in good conscience without giving a warning first. Our next recommendation is Rakuto no Onotachi from Spiced Ice. Basically, this guy is a loser and gets picked on by delinquents. His grandfather leaves him a scroll, which he activates, giving him an aura that permanently makes delinquent girls attracted to him. A basic harem high school setup, the manga was going decent until they made one of the delinquent girls look like this. Our next recommendation is from Braun Pro, who recommended the second Clemming of Gluttony. It begins with our main character dying on a battlefield. Because he has done well, one of the gods tells him he can have one wish granted before he dies, his wish being to send his current memories to his past. We are then met with his old self, a broken man at the end of his ropes. This version of himself isn't a good person. He gambles, drinks, and extorts loved ones for money. But after passing out in the street, he experiences the memories of his future life through a dream, and the regret he feels at the end of the dream ignites his journey of change. He doesn't instantly become able to help others at the drop of a hat or see the wrong in his choices, but over time he wrongs his rights. There is a bit of genericity, especially with bad guy tropes, and the MC being extremely fucking broken, but at the same time, there are aspects that aren't generic. Isekai tends to have this trope where people get transported because they are considered to be the chosen one. Our MC is not the only candidate, and the tests they have to pass are not very forgiving. If you don't like Isekai, you probably aren't going to like the second coming of Gluttony. But if you do, it's definitely above average. And if you end up choosing to read the original web novel instead, it's well above average. This is by the same author who did a short but extremely well-written story you might know of called The Horizon. That's all you need to know, and that's all I have to say. Why, why does he keep doing this to me, man? Lam is one of the most interesting experiences I've had in manga. There are fewer words in its chapters than dollars I make a month on YouTube. Please sponsor me. Yep, even with its absence of text, it just works. Blam has a unique way of immersing you into its world. It is the best case of show, don't tell I've ever seen. You'll have questions, many of them, but that is exactly the appeal of this manga. You'll spend minutes analyzing panels, trying to garner any new information you can get out of them. It's weird, because you would assume that reading a manga with barely any text would go faster than reading one with a lot of text. However, because no one is feeding its narrative to you, you'll find yourself lost in its panels, forced to create that narrative yourself. It's great. Just be careful not to fall into its rabbit hole, because it goes deep. Like, very, very deep. The next recommendation is from Trippy Cliff, who recommended Boy's Abyss. Boy's Abyss is practically Blood on the Tracks version 2.0, but it's not only the mom with issues this time, it's everyone. Is a little over the top at times, to the point where I honestly labeled it garbage around 20 chapters in. Yet, it's a train wreck you can't look away from, and as you keep turning the pages, you'll realize that there is a lot more depth than there initially seems. Although the reveals later in the manga aren't enough to excuse every action and behavior from certain characters, the story is way smarter than it lets on in the beginning. If you are a fan of Blood on the Tracks, and you want to see more people get gaslit and manipulated emotionally, Boy's Abyss is perfect for you. This one comes from fellow YouTuber Bihan, who I would shout out, but their recommendation was Boruto. I understand that the anime version of Boruto has a lot of filler that doesn't occur in the manga, but when I'm scrolling through Twitter and I see a clip of Sasuke fighting a fucking dinosaur, it just doesn't make me go, WHOA! I gotta read this! But who knows, maybe I've been missing out, let's find out. Yeah, it's mid. There isn't any other word that comes to mind when trying to describe this. Oh, there is one more. Boruto. More like boring toe. 
Our next recommendation is from Crippo, who recommended Ultra Heaven. The author, without a doubt, has either taken many drugs in the past or while drawing this manga. Because how? How do you come up with this sober? In Ultra Heaven, most drugs are legal. Walk to your local bar, and not only can you order some drinks, but you can get whatever the fuck makes you experience this. Because of its lax laws, a lot of people in this world are junkies, and our main character is no exception. He's currently hooked onto something called Peter Pan, and after running out, he tries to get his hands on more. By chance, he runs into someone who claims to have a newer version of Peter Pan, and is given a sample for free. Initially, nothing happens, but then... What follows is impossible to describe, best experienced by reading the manga yourself. The closest way I can describe it is that the manga puts you in the same shoes as the main character. Just like him, you don't know what is reality and what isn't, if 5 minutes have passed or 2 days, if those people shot him or if he shot back. Sadly, even with all the praise I've given it, it's on hiatus and hasn't been touched in over a decade. But even with its limited 600 pages, I think it's a manga everyone should at least check out. The next recommendation is Negima, which is recommended by Easy Guru. Basically, a 10-year-old magic genius named Negima is tasked with teaching English at a middle school as a requirement to graduate from his magic school. I don't know why exactly teaching English furthers his education in magic and will make him a great mage, but anyways, Negima goes, Achoo! Oh. In this manga, like when anything happens at all, people's clothes come off. It's to be expected since it's an etchy harem, like 7-8 years ago, I definitely would have read and labeled Negima as an absolute masterpiece, but I'm just not the target demographic anymore. Our next recommendation comes from Nybert, who recommended Ushijima the Loan Shark. With its name and cool looking cover, I went in with hopes that this one might be similar to the fable. It's not. I've realized that manga has slightly brainwashed me, I see characters that are supposed to be bad like Yakuza and Loan Sharks, and I instantly think that they are probably secretly decent people with their own circumstances, right? That's not always true, that is a trope and this manga does not follow it. In its first 10 chapters, there's a short 2 chapter arc where Ushijima, our main character and a loan shark, manipulates a woman into borrowing more and more money which she obviously can't pay back. What follows in the woman's attempt to pay it back is practically a speedrun of the plot of Emergence. I don't know about you guys, but I consider reading Emergence to be a once in a lifetime thing. You don't really need to read it twice. I do believe that this manga intentionally has no likable characters, opting to focus more on being a social commentary on the gambling, prostitution, and scam problems that exist in Japan. The point of this manga is to find fault in everyone, but I- wait a second, Philippines mentioned? Get the Dark Souls music. I'm a simple guy, I see knights, I see big enemy serpent thing, and I like. This one had a very interesting world and characters. Unfortunately, although it's marked as completed, the manhwa was never finished. And even then, the plot we had so far was already pretty hard to follow. In the end, I don't know exactly what the plot was about, but this guy looks cool, and this thing looks cool. The next recommendation is from Moxori and is Ubel Blatt. Ubel Blatt is a dark fantasy that obviously takes inspiration from Berserk, especially in its horses. This is the first chapter by the way, which is crazy! Berserk had at least 100 before it introduced this guy. However, because Ubel Blatt is inspired by Berserk, it has very, very big shoes that are impossible to fill. It is not necessarily a bad manga, but if someone was looking for a dark fantasy recommendation, there is no world in my mind where I would recommend this over Berserk. However, if you already caught up on Berserk, you might like this one. It has a lot of gore and a couple similar themes, but I suggest going in with low expectations. The next one is from Orangefish130, who recommended Omniscient Reader. Coming home from work on a train, Doctor, a 28-year-old, reads the final chapter of a web novel he has been following his entire life. To him, it's more than just a simple web novel. It helped him get through a lot of tough times in his life, and unknown to him, within the next hour, the information in that novel will become his lifeline. Because that very novel's story is about to become reality. And that reality is not pretty. 
He passes the first trial, however, he hasn't taken the main character's place in this story. Instead, he's an unknown entity to the novel, a wild card. And that is honestly what I like most about this manhwa. Although Dokja is broken, most of his brokenness comes from his information rather than broken abilities. And even then, he isn't the most overpowered person, not even close. It makes him feel like an underdog that you want to root for. It isn't without its ridiculous writing though. There's this one part where Dokja knows that if you put two items into this certain chest, a random better item will come out. There had to have been a better way to give him this broken sword. And can I just say that these stupid reaction messages should just be removed? Like, why? Constellation Veiled Conspirator? That's great that you're impressed by Doksha's foolishness, but like, when did I ask? All things considered, I had a lot of fun with this one. It's also drawn by the same studio who did solo leveling, so the art is top tier. Definitely give it a chance if it piqued your interest. Our next recommendation is from Killua PvP, who recommended Addicted to Curry. This manga is all about making curry and sexually harassing women. I kind of expected it because this is written by the guy who made Dogaza, which is literally about a guy getting on the ground and begging girls to show him their underwear. Besides that, it does have the recipes for the curry they make at the end of the chapters, which honestly look like they slap, but I'm too lazy to test them out myself. Our next recommendation is 20th Century Boys from Paulo Romero. Naoki Urosawa is a genius. It's one thing to write a single amazing story that many can claim to be a masterpiece, but to have written several is something else. All his works are slow burners, however he masterfully ties everything together as his manga progress, leaving no small detail behind. Everything you read. Gabi Maru wants to die, but can't. Blades, fire, stretching of the limbs, nothing works on him. It isn't until he comes face to face with a person who can actually take his life when he realizes that he's still attached to it. Deep down, he still wants to live because of his wife. A person who slowly made someone labeled Gabi Maru the empty realize he isn't so empty after all. He's thrown a lifeline from the executioner. They have orders from the Shogun stating that a single prisoner can be pardoned if they manage to bring them the elixir of life. The problem is, they believe the elixir is located on an island where everyone they have sent so far are either dead or have come back looking like this. This one is fire. I resisted the urge to binge the entire thing because it has an anime being cooked up over at MAPPA coming out really soon. I'm probably going to read the entire thing no matter what, but I'll let MAPPA cook. Rentaro has been rejected a hundred times, but he wants a girlfriend badly. Luckily for him, after praying to a god to give him a girlfriend, the god blesses him saying he will meet 100 soulmates while in high school. The catch is, everyone normally has one soulmate, and it so happens that if two soulmates meet and don't end up falling in love, they end up dying, leaving Rentaro with no choice but to date every single one of them. Let me say that again, Rentaro has 100 soulmates. The author is going to make a hundred girl harem. How many manga do you know even have 100 characters? There's like two. But you know what? I'm all for it. This manga has an absolutely dumb premise, but is an absolute blast to read. And it's because the hundred girlfriends who really, 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 really love you doesn't take itself seriously. Just look at the title. It'll have panels like this and constantly break the fourth wall. It also makes you want to see how far the author can go, how he's going to incorporate all 100 characters. I mean, look at this panel. They aren't even one-fifth of the way there, and it's already crazy. Solid stuff. Also, this is Best Girl. The next recommendation is from Al Ramam and is The Oracle Pass. This is our first and only web novel recommendation out of the 50. And while editing this, I realized that it's probably for the better. It's already slightly challenging to make manga edits engaging, but how am I supposed to make text look interesting? Do I just have a montage? Do I make a fly around? This one had a good start, an interesting concept set in a future dystopian world where aliens have invaded. If you can read things without pictures, which is a tall task in this day and age, I would say give it a couple chapters, you might like it. In the most understanding way possible, not for me. 
I have a deeply rooted hatred for characters that are comprised of a single personality trait. It comes from a game called Danganronpa. Back in 2020, I was looking for games to buy on Steam during its winter sale and saw Danganronpa was only $5. I thought, cool, I like anime, 96% positive reviews, and I've heard a lot of praise for it in the past. I was promised a game with an interesting plot, characters, and an engaging murder mysteries that I would have to solve. I found out that day that visual novels are not my cup of tea. I know I'm barking up the wrong tree here, but I say this prepared to be told to unalive myself down in the comments. I hated Danganronpa, and the part I hated most was that every single one of its characters' personalities can be described in one word. I understand that some people like characters that are quirky, but you can have characters that emphasize their idiosyncrasies and still make them more than that. Gintama does it, Chainsaw Man does it, Dorihidoro does it. I don't know how prevalent it is throughout the entirety of Bungo Stray Dogs, and its characters might become more fleshed out later, but in the first 10 chapters, it stuck out like a sore thumb for me. And with that, I've successfully not only pissed off one community, but two at the same time. The next one is from Obscure Gamer, who recommended Gachi Akuda. This one hasn't been absolutely taking the shonen community by storm, and I've heard nothing but praise about it, and after reading it, I can totally see why. It hits the ground running, not wasting any time getting into the action. It has an interesting world with a cool power system. Most people can only use one weapon, but our main character can fight with anything, ranging from chains to a plunger. Great art, great character design, and a very promising premise. I am willing to bet that this will get an anime adaptation announcement within the next year. If I'm wrong, I don't know, you guys decide what I have to do. It also has some very interesting villains to say the least. Do you know the difference between dealing the seven and unknown symbol? The difference? At first look, it would appear I cut the seven and the unknown symbol the same way. They both end up discarded, but each tile meant something different. The reason I cut the unknown symbol in this hand, there were no tiles around the unknown symbol to wait for. However, the reason I cut the seven from my hand was that there were- What, what the fuck is happening, man? Akagi was solid. It's about a 13-year-old genius who outplays his opponents inside and outside the game of Mahjong. It's by the same author who wrote Kaiji, but unlike Kaiji, Akagi only focused on Mahjong rather than a multitude of originally created games, so you probably have to understand the rules of Mahjong to enjoy it to the fullest. If you don't or are not interested in learning, I would read or watch Kaiji instead. It's fire. You is someone who hasn't had a great life so far bullied enough to the point of considering ending it all, but fortunately, he doesn't. He happens to come across a book about punching, which he uses to distract himself, training his left hook. One day, he happens to use that left hook, and that causes a fire to ignite inside him, one that can't be put out. Holy Land reminded me a lot of The Climber, the theme of a lonely character feeling utterly lost with the direction of their life, happening to find something that makes them feel alive. Knowing that they might not ever get another chance, they work hard to stay in that place, their holy land. What makes this manga feel even more real is that the author is practically writing from personal experience. He had a troubled youth often getting into street fights himself. In a lot of the fights he shares his knowledge as a third party, which might seem like it would take you out of its story and narrative, but it ends up helping it. It makes the manga feel more human and real, a story where an author is letting people see who they are and how they think. Oftentimes, I find the stories with authors like these are the ones that end up becoming my favorites. With a countless amount of good shonen coming out, every day it becomes increasingly harder to recommend older ones. A lot of the newer generation shonen have ditched this idea, prevalent in many older shonen, that no one should die. So for a shonen that ended in 2010, I was not expecting to see someone get their head spun like a tabletop spinner a couple chapters in. Sure, these are probably just throwaway characters, but it still doesn't change the fact that I didn't expect it. Siren throws her MC into a mysterious world that is actually the future of Japan. No one really understands why Japan looks like this in the future or why they need to clear Siren's games, but that's the hook of the story. I've seen a lot of people call this the shonen version of Gantz, so if you like shonen or Gantz, give it a chance. Shout out all my cat lovers out there, because I swear this is the only appeal of the manga. This next recommendation comes from Euro, who recommended Phoenix. 
I can see where Spirit Circle got its inspiration from. This one is made by Ozumu Tezuka, who, if you didn't know, is considered the grandfather of manga. It spans 12 different stories that tackle different themes tied together by the constant reincarnation of its characters. I'll be honest, it's hard to recommend things that are this dated. Like, I'm sure Citizen Kane bangs, but that new Mario movie coming out? That's got Chris Pratt in it. If you can get past its dated art, there is a lot you can get out of this manga, but I think that reading a more modernized approach to its very similar themes in a story like Spirit Circle is a good alternative. This one is also by Ozumu Tezuka. It's about three different people named Adolf. One you may have heard of from pop culture figure Kanye West, while the others were born in Kobe, Japan. One is a half-Japanese, half-German son of a Nazi diplomat, and the other is a son of a Jewish baker. The two young Adolfs quickly become best friends, but their parents don't approve of that friendship. Regardless of their parents' warnings, they stay friends up until the half-Japanese, half-German Adolf is forced to go to Hitler Youth, a school that doesn't exactly teach you to love and respect everyone. It's extremely sad watching as he slowly becomes brainwashed, questioning everything he considered right when he was younger. And eventually, he turns into the worst version of himself. This is a tough read on very heavy topics. However, it's extremely well put together. The art is dated, but the content surpasses the dated art by a landslide. I've always liked the death game genre. How do people act when pushed into a corner? Do they despair? Do they give in? Do they betray? Or do they prevail? Yet, oftentimes the death game genre focuses way too much on its gore, or having someone be a god at manipulating people. I'll be honest, in the anime and manga community, the bar for death games is extremely low. The best we got is like King's Game, or Future's Diary, which are fun to watch, but man do they suck. Alice in Borderland didn't just surpass that bar, it straight up smashed it. Every game in it is unique and a pleasure to try to figure out what you would do in their shoes. Characters in it feel like actual people and have actual development. Smart decisions are smart and when working together people play to their strengths. If you like Squid Game, you'll like this one. You can just tell when something is going to be peak. Our next recommendation is Sunken Rock from Rice Man. Basically, our main character, Ken, chases a girl he likes to Korea, dropping out of high school in order to do so. He plans to become a police officer in Korea, but he doesn't find any success. Not only is he unable to become a police officer, but he can't find any work at all. After getting into a street brawl, he somehow finds himself begged to become the boss of a local gang, and it escalates from there. This one is extremely good, likeable characters, good comedy, a nice premise, and the art is just my lord, Boichi can draw. My favorite part in the first 10 chapters was this 1v1 Ken had to win against this absolute unit. Ken knows he can't win straight up, so in order to beat him, he runs to the guy's car and starts scratching it with the coin to get the advantage. Definitely will be revisiting this one in the future. If you enjoyed the fable, I highly recommend you give Sunken Rock a try as it gave me similar vibes. The next recommendation is from Old Paper Bag, who recommended Hinomaro Sumo. This is a sports manga all about sumo wrestling. Pretty typical stuff for a sports manga, you have your positive main character who's good at the sport but is striving to become the best. You have your supporting cast of characters, and the mini training slash character arcs that cause massive growth in their abilities. The art is good and the cast is solid, if you like sumo or sports manga in general, give it a gander. Our next recommendation is from Bruno, who recommended Akumetsu. This one had me go through every single emotion within its first chapter. It opens up with our guy risen it up, then two pages later we are met with this. Aw oh, hell nah. You have to stomach a couple panels of it before our boy comes in and says fuck your toes, and as a matter of fact, everyone else as well, proceeding to kill everything in his vicinity. But then he dies. However, no worries, Akumetsu comes back to life. He has one goal in mind, to rid Japan of all evil. It's like Death Note, but instead of having a notebook, Shu is a badass who can't die. This manga is great, Shu seems like a good protagonist, and I'm very interested in seeing his ideology and reasoning expanded upon further down in the manga. And just like that, we are on our 50th recommendation. I have one thing I want to say before I talk about Golden Kamoi, and that is thank you. 
If you're still here, that means for some reason, you spent these last 44 minutes watching this video. You sat through the good, the bad, the weird, and the dumb. The absolute butchering of your names and manga titles, and my stupid jokes. I probably said a nice thing about a manga you don't like, and a mean thing about a manga you do like, and yet, you still chose to continue the video to the end, and for that, I am nothing but thankful. If you have something you want to say to me, mean or nice, comment below because I do read every single one of them. This video has had its ups and downs, but let's end it off strong. This is going to sound extremely cringe and stupid, because it is, but I think the best way to describe Golden Kamoi is that it's like a good friend. There's never a dual moment in it. Every single one of its characters breathes life and personality into the story. I spent hours reading about them hunting, cooking, talking, and bonding, and I realized about halfway through the manga just how attached I'd become to each and every character. It's because they feel like real people. This manga made me laugh, smile, and even tear up a couple times. You want nothing but the best for everyone and for all of them to achieve their goals. But when you start to realize that this journey, the amount of chapters left are slowly dwindling down, a wave of sentimentality washes over you. You don't want it to end, but everything has to come to an end. You just have to remind yourself to not cry because it's over, but to smile because it happened.